Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a replica of a 1890s era racing dory of the type that was uh, used around Marblehead. Uh, we're building from uh, we're building from John Gardner's The Dory Book, and uh, illustrations by Sam Manning. Alright, so it's uh, still pouring out there. And, uh, yeah, we're going to uh, nail on the, um, the rest of the stem now. So uh, we're going to be going directly into um, some uh, very hard oak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, try and open up the hole as much as I can into the oak stem so that those uh, nails will go in, but basically we're just going to have to drive these things home. And uh, at this point, I'm going into the stem so I can drill at 90 degrees to the, uh, to the planking. What I want to avoid doing, try to avoid doing, is coming out of the plank and then going into the stem on the inside of the uh, stem. So I want to go directly from the wood in from the uh, plank into the stem and not break out into the air at all. But I want to get as close back this way as I can so I'll go into the meat of the stem. All right, so that one's right on the edge, but perfect. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go back down that way a tiny bit because it's so close to being uh, so close to being too close this way, but it isn't. <laughs> so the other thing I'm going to do is uh, try and knock the uh, knock the wood chips through from where I just drilled so that I'm not. I got a little knife here so that I'm not nailing wood chips into the seam between the plank and the uh, the other thing I can do at this point is uh, grab a backing block because that's going to help me get this in uh, just that much better. So I'll go snag that it's on the other. Pretty much whenever I want want something or need something, it's on the other side of the boat from wherever I'm standing. It's a uh, but I don't know what it is. It's a psychological thing. I must be self sabotaging my future self by leaving things on the opposite side of the boat from where I'll need them. Ah, that looks good. That looks real good. So have a look here. So this uh, this gap is what I was just talking about. This space between the side of the stem and the plank. You can see the nail is well, the nail is actually right here, right here, and it's not showing, like I said, but it's, it came through the plank right there and went into the stem, you know, right there. 
so it's uh, you know it's as close in as I can get it without having the nail show. And uh, what I actually want is um, is to keep them a little bit further away, actually, just uh, to be on the safe side. Uh, I figured out the light a little bit better, I think. All right, so now what I've got to do is uh, is work my way up, doing pretty much that exact same thing, as close as I can. Um, and Yeah, so those, those, that line, any nail along that line should go into the stem and not, uh, not break through, break out into the uh, interior of the boat. And so what's the alternative? What if I go too far that way? Well, if I go too far this way, then I'm going to be coming to the, to the triangle, the sharp point of the stem, and the drill will go into the oak, and then it'll break out on the far side of the stem. Now, that's not the end of the world. I can still drive a ring nail in there, and since oak holds nails so well, as long as I get some of the ring nail into the oak, it's not going to go anywhere. And then I can just trim it off on the far side when I go to put the other plank on. It's not something that happens, uh, you know, ever to my knowledge, but I mean, it wouldn't be a big deal if it did. Um, so yeah, it's just not something that I, it's not a mistake I usually make. But it wouldn't be a terrible mistake to make. I think it would probably be better than drilling it too far to the inside and breaking out and then going back in. I'd, I'd actually rather, you know, just miss the tip of the triangle there. You, have to, you, know, you can always put in another nail beside it. So yeah, this is, uh, this is working out really well. That pulled in nice and tight. So I'm going to just keep on going. I'm putting these uh, ring nails in. Oh, maybe uh, five inches apart. Something like that. I don't have to go crazy with these things because they hold so well. Uh, when I get up here on the stem, I'll probably put a couple in a little bit closer together. Because that's like the end of the plank. And I want the nails to hold that at the end of the plank on good. There will be another plank coming down over this, and I'll put a one more nail through both planks. Most likely, we'll see how we'll see what the other plank is up to. But uh, so it's yeah, you know, it's it's going to be on there good anyway. see the uh, drill smoking there or not but that's what oak does tough stuff this is that granby oak from out in western mass out at the uh, acorn to arabella boys i was noticing where they started started strip planking their uh, cabin sides already so we gotta get cracking if we're gonna be out there on the water when they're 
sailing around. Yeah, it's, uh, I've actually got this plank up so tight now that I can't even get the uh, knife blade in. And if the plank's tight, then you're not going to be getting wood chips between the two planks anyway. It's just if there's a little air gap in there. So, yeah, but that's how tight it's coming, so it's, it's a good sign. And uh, you want to drive those ring nails with as few as few hits as you can. So you want to put some real power behind them when they're going, because uh, this oak is pretty unforgiving as far as um, it'll bend a nail if you aren't driving it hard. And just tapping on it, it'll eventually bend over. So I'm pulling the uh, drill bit out and then going again to uh, clear the clear the um, clear the oak out of the uh, flutes of the drill. See if we can swap this clamp over and clamp from the other side. Yeah, it's actually coming in nice on the uh, on the bow side too. Nice and tight there. So what I'm going to do now is just catch this corner. I don't know if you can see that. Just catch this corner with the uh, clamp and pull this in nice and tight right up along. I'll put one more nail in there. These are this this is honestly coming together so nicely that I don't even think I'm gonna to need to double up up here. Put another nail in there and uh we'll call it good. Yeah, I, I drove this one in down a little bit further down to try and bring it in bring this in tight, but it's really already pretty tight, so alright. Now we'll go about here. Sometimes I even uh, impress myself. Yeah, you know what, maybe we will do two up here. Put one more right in there. Right next to the lap.
Yeah, this uh, backing block is huge at this point because we're way out here on the end of the stem and this thing would really be flexing around if I was trying to drive just the nail into the uh, into the stem. Once we get a few more planks on this thing will be rock solid out here but right now it's uh, it's you know basically unsupported. There's two rivets in the in the bottom and a couple uh, ring nails and that's all that's holding this thing on other than the bracing that we put up on it a couple videos ago. Alright so uh, yeah we're at a 15 minute mark and we've got a lot more nails to put in along the length of the uh, the chine there where the sides hit the bottom. We've got a few in up here already which stayed tight when we put when we uh, when we pulled in the uh, bow so that's a good sign and uh, yeah so I'm just going to work my way back along doing uh, doing what I was doing in the previous video putting nails in uh, along the edge maybe I'll maybe I'll shoot a couple of those and then uh, we'll jump back to the stern once I get those nails in There's another one of these around. Oh, well, I found the uh, rugging for some tennial anyway. It's got to be better than none, right? Um, getting these nails in here. Is, uh, you know, it's great if you don't break through into the, into the inside of the boat or, uh, break through um, out through the bottom uh, like I was saying we are gonna epoxy this uh, fiberglass and epoxy this boat so, so it is gonna get sealed anyway so it's not a if you did break through it wouldn't be a big deal whereas in a old-timey boat you know you gotta
drill a hole in your wood, you got a hole in your wood. They weren't all kinds of uh, you know, good quality waterproof glues around at the time. I mean, I'm sure you could do something with pine pitch or whatever and make a wood plug or something, but you know, it's not like today when you can fix any mistake with a dab of epoxy. Alright, so those are uh, taking up nice and tight. And uh, I'm just going to work my way back. Just like this. You gotta get the drill to And uh, these ring nails hold great in the pine. You know, they're, they're impossible to get out of oak, but they, uh, they do a good job in the pine too, so. So, the boat will be structurally, you know, this is, this is a structural fastening. The uh, fiberglass we put on, like I say, you know, it'll cover up holes and stuff and it will keep the boat from leaking. But that fiberglass is not a structural uh, part of the boat. It doesn't hold the boat together, keep it from flexing, anything like that. It may add a tiny bit of rigidity, but hardly any. Because uh, part of the reason is because we're going to be setting the epoxy in the tight bond three which isn't uh we're gonna be, which isn't like uh you know like say west system where if you uh, coated a fiberglass bottom with west system then you know it would be to some degree a structural member you know the the amount of glass we're going to use it would be an awful flimsy structural member, but it would, you know, type on uh, type on three. However, is remains flexible. So uh, it's not going to have any real strength to it. All right, so. And like I said, gonna go down the whole boat just like that, and then uh, you know we'll check back in once uh, once I get towards the transom. Yeah. So uh, second thought, I'm probably not gonna get this uh, get this entire. Uh, Entire garbage on tonight. So, we'll probably just end the video with me banging away on these things. I'm uh, up against a bit of a Time crunch on uh, getting this garbage on because uh, in one, two, three days I head uh, north for the very last of the small small reach regattas, which is a um, a gathering organized by a wooden boat. Um, or the editor of Wooden Boat Magazine, Tom Jackson, and uh, a bunch of other like-minded guys, members of uh, the TSCA, Traditional Small Craft Association, which was actually started by uh, John Gardner, who took the lines on this boat. So 
So I'll be taking another John Gardner boat up there, which is a Centennial. That's what I'm planning on anyway. The other option is a last minute uh, swap out to the duck punt, but the uh, plan at the moment is to go with Centennial, so see what happens with that. I just got a, a new trailer tire for Centennial's trailer. See how that goes, the trip north and all. But that's a really uh, great event that's been going on for, I believe it's 15 years, since 2005. So yeah, I guess that's 15 years, yeah. Yeah, this will be the 15th one because they canceled last year due to COVID. Um, All right, so I got a little uh, peekaboo here with the uh, last nail that I put in. It didn't actually come into the boat, but I can see the uh, wood beginning to bulge a little bit right where the drill came up. So I'll know I gotta angle it further down. And on this one here, I uh, came through twice. <laughs> really drilled. Well, like I say, it's not a big deal uh, with the um, everything's gonna get glassed over. It gets easier and easier to nail these as you get to the narrower part of the board because you can actually swing the hammer down and hit the uh, nail or at least hit the um, the nail set from up above. You don't have to come in from the side on it. Yeah, so like I said, I'm spacing these about uh, five inches apart or so. I went too low on that one. Now, where is my little measure? Because this is where the, yeah. Okay, so this thing worked great when I was doing Centennial. Because Centennial has a 38 inch wide bottom. So, you know, it was out here and it was easy to measure the uh, height of the garboard planking. Uh, but this thing isn't getting in on the alpha. It's, uh, I got a 21 inch bottom on this, so significantly narrower, and there's just not enough room between the bottom and the, uh, and the, um, building bed to use that little, because that's a great little gauge just to kind of give your eye a helping hand to get the right heights.
Yeah, so we're going to be uh, cruising around Agamog and Reach. And, uh, and it's usually great weather. It's looking, it's looking like it's going to be another good year. Um, Forecasts are uh, in the mid 70s for the high temperature and uh, 12 to 15 mile an hour breezes, which is you know just ideal for most of the boats that are going to be up there. It's a little bit light for Centennial, but uh, you know definitely doable. So you know, it sounds like it's going to be a beautiful. Be beautiful few days, five days. Thanks for uh, stopping by building the Alpha Dory. Next video will uh, hopefully be finishing up uh, nailing on the Garbard and uh, you know, get the uh, transom all, all done up and then uh, move on to the next garboard. So anyway, yeah, thanks for uh, stopping in. Uh, God bless and have a good day.